In this video, we're going to be taking a look at character creation, or more specifically, how to make a good character in the Outer Worlds, what the attributes do, what the skills do, what it all means, and how to put it all together to make an effective character. Attributes in the Outer Worlds are extremely important because they give you passive benefits that you can't find anywhere else, in some cases, and things that increase your attributes are few and far between uh, and are much later in the game. Uh, although you can lower these if you have flaws. So let's begin with attributes. Strength is the first attribute we're going to be taking a look at here, and it increases melee damage and carrying capacity, or decreases it if you lower it. And I, for the second, I just want to put aside carrying capacity, it's because it's not exactly the greatest passive benefit. There are perks that give you carrying capacity, so if you need carrying capacity, strength is not a good reason to take it. The, the reason to take strength is for melee damage. There really aren't any other ways to gain increased percentage melee damage in the Outer world. so if you want to play a melee character, this is a must-have attribute. I would recommend maxing it out. You don't have to max it out, but you're definitely going to want to put some points in strength if you're playing a melee character. Otherwise, you're going to suffer in the damage department later on in the game. Next up, taking a look at Dexterity. This attribute is probably the weakest in the game because it increases melee weapon attack speed and ranged weapon reload speed. Neither of these things is extremely valuable, uh, mostly because the scores, the values which they provide are fairly low. So you're not going to notice a huge increase in your melee attack speed or your ranged reload speed with these things. And probably the two of, of these two, the most important one is melee attack speed. You're probably either going to be playing a stealth build where you're trying to kill things in one hit, or you're really not going to notice a whole lot of damage difference in attacking 20%, 30% faster than you would normally. So even though it can boost your DPS, there are better attribute points to spend if you want to increase your overall melee damage. Moving along to Intelligence, this is probably the best overall attribute in the Outer Worlds, and this is because it increases your critical damage, and there are only a few ways to do that in this game. And this also applies to melee critical damage, uh, as well as ranged damage. It doesn't matter what weapon type you're using, it's going to give you a flat increase to critical damage. The Outer Worlds has a huge focus on critical hits. If you put points into ranged weapons or melee weapons or two-handed weapons, they tend to increase your critical chance. So you definitely want to have high critical damage so that when you do crit, you do a lot more damage. Additionally, there are a lot of perks in the game that revolve around dealing critical hits. So this is just an all-around good thing to have if you're planning on making your build revolving around critical hits, which is very, very likely to do because that's passively what you gain from putting points into things like long guns or one-handed melee. Perception is another really good attribute, though, not quite as good as intelligence, because you're going to gain extra damage when you hit the head of a human or weak spot of another type of enemy. So that's only going to apply when you do that, whereas critical damage will apply to no matter what you're doing. So if you're planning on playing more of a finesse type build, so to speak, where you're aiming for that weak spot or that headshot, like if you're playing like a sniper or a slower firing weapon, or even a melee player who's aiming for the head or the weak spot when you're swinging, because this also applies to melee attacks, then this is going to be another good attribute for you. It's not going to be as good as strength if you're just talking pure melee damage, but it's something to consider taking if you, you know, want to spend some attribute points on it. Charm is a very good attribute if you're going to play a type of character that wants to resolve things through dialogue and maybe has less combat, um, or maybe bypass objectives because you can persuade people to do things. If you plan on persuading or lying or intimidating or even resolving things with like science or engineering, this attribute is going to go a long way because what it does is it allows your reputation with that person's faction to further affect skill checks. Uh, one of the interesting things about the Outer Worlds is your reputation with a faction will lower the, if, if assuming it's good reputation, will lower the amount you need to pass the skill check, uh, whatever type of skill check it is, with that person's dialogue uh, if you have higher reputation, and it increases it negatively if you have negative reputation with that faction. This ability is going to you know, make your positive reputation go further, and it's going to lessen the impact of having negative reputation. So if you like to kill people or steal things and get caught or intimidate people, etc., it's not going to have as much of an impact, and it's going to allow you to pass those skill checks easier. Temperament is not a very, very strong passive in the game. It's very, very tempting because it increases health regeneration per second, which when I tested it out, that sounded amazing to me. If you're playing a melee build, you're running into gunfire, you're getting hit, health regeneration is excellent to have. However... If you're in a sticky situation playing on a harder difficulty where you're running in, health regeneration isn't going to save you from getting killed. You're going to have to heal or you're going to have to build your character in a way that you don't take so much damage or play in a way that you don't take so much damage because it's not going to save you. So there are better passives out there with the ones mentioned from strength or intelligence or perception than this one. But if you don't have 
you know, any idea what sort of character you're going to play. You're just, you know, new to the game and you're not really worried about how your character is going to fare in combat. It's not a bad attribute to pick up because it just, you know, it's just very, very convenient. Having yourself restore health very quickly when you're not in combat means you don't have to wait in between encounters or waste heals. Although healing is abundant in the game, so it's not necessarily necessary. The last thing I want to say about attributes before moving on to skills is that when you select them, try not to worry about what skills they increase or enhance because you're going to have a lot of skill points in this game and it's not the best reason to pick an attribute. You're going to have plenty of at uh, skill points to go around, so pick your attributes based on the passive they give and that alone. Moving along to skills, we have one-handed melee and two-handed melee in the melee section. This is going to come down to personal preference, what you like to do if you want to attack faster or if you want to attack slower but deal more damage. The thing you'll notice about two-handed melee too is it has a higher default critical chance, so you're more likely to crit. So if you're making a build revolving around crits, you might want to opt more for two-handed than one-handed. Taking a look at the range section, you have handguns, long guns, and heavy weapons. And it, here it's just going to boil down to your you know, style of play. Do you want to play close up uh, with handguns? Do you want to play long range with long guns? Or do you want to use heavy weapons like flamethrowers and machine guns and possibly even rocket launchers, stuff like that? That's going to boil down to that. The passives are relatively the same. Uh, they reduce sway and increase critical chance and you know increase critical damage. Uh, these sort of things are all roughly the same from each weapon to each weapon, so this is really going to come down to personal preference. Um, I personally like to play long guns because I feel like um, you can kill just about anything in one shot from stealth at long range if you have a hard-hitting weapon and you hit it in the head, but you can do whatever you want here. It's just going to come down to personal playstyle. Having spent some time playing a melee character, the defense abilities are sort of underwhelming if you're talking about what they can actually do for you uh, with their 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 unlocks. Dodging is just something you don't really use much of in the game. Um, you're using tactical time dilation if you're hanging back, picking things off, and when you're in melee range, you're not really dodging. You're spending all your time swinging your weapon, trying to kill things as quickly as you can so you stop getting shot in the face. That being said, the last unlocks in dodge are very, very good for a melee build. Uh, increasing your melee attack damage for a swing or and also your um, armor penetration uh, for the next swing. However, it's one swing, so how much time you want to spend dodging versus how much time you want to spend attacking, I don't know if that's going to be more beneficial to a character. However, you know, theoretically, you could dodge, stealth, whack something for buff damage and maybe kill it, but that's an awful lot of work. Frankly, I didn't do a lot of blocking during the game when I was playing melee, and I... The strategy is generally try and kill things quickly because you're outnumbered and you can't just sit there and block. So, uh, and trying to time a ter perfect block is frankly very, very difficult to do. Things move very, very quickly. You move very, very quickly. So the reason to take block isn't necessarily the skills that it has inside of it. Uh, it's the passive of increasing your armor rating when using a melee weapon. If you can increase your armor rating high enough, the amount of damage you take is negligible. So this is a good way to keep you alive. If you have extra points to dump here, consider doing it, or if you find yourself dying very often in melee, try adding some points to block and seeing if that armor rating keeps you alive. If you look at the dialogue skills, these are generally used for dialogue, go figure. Uh, you shouldn't really worry about what the, the skill unlocks are for these things. They don't help your passive dialogue uh, choices. They're not going to make you more persuasive or lie or intimidate better. They're actually combat related and... They're not super useful, but if you look over all three of them, if you get to 20 in each one, you actually have like a very good chance of causing negative status effects in certain situations. So I'd highly recommend taking these to at least 20 um, in order to get that. But past that, it doesn't seem very worth it to me. You're talking about a chance of a thing happening, and you shouldn't be banking on that chance when you can just flat out increase your likelihood to critical hit with something else. Or it just seems weird that take a dialogue option... Um, in order to increase your damage. So you're not going to be taking these if you want to increase your damage. You're going to be taking them to help with your checks, which is why you should be taking them. But it's outside that, if you find yourself not doing a lot of persuading, lying, or intimidating, make sure they're at least 20 to get, you know, somewhat benefit from these things. Moving into the stealth category, we have sneak, hack, and lockpick, and all of these are very, very good. Sneak, of course, is going to help you steal, help you kill enemies from stealth, help you sneak by without getting detected. It's very, very useful in this game, and if you want to make an assassin-type build, it's pretty much a must. You look at the last few uh, unlocks, weak spot damage, 20%, sneak attacks ignore 50% of target's armor. 
you can deal a shit ton of damage in one blow if you if you have this maxed out. The hack skill, it's good to get it to at least 20 because you want to be able to sell at vending machines if you need to get rid of some inventory. It's a good way to free up space, make some money. And if you ever want to buy restricted things at the vending machines, then you need to take this to 40. Uh, it helps you open doors and unlock terminals. So it's just an all-around good skill to have. So consider, you know, putting some points into this one if you, you know, want to make life just generally easier. Lockpicking you use far more than you use hack in the game, and frankly, if I could recommend one skill to take that wasn't combat related, it would be lockpick. First of all, the first skill you unlock reduces the cost of any container requiring one mag pick to zero. So if it, if it costs one, then you pay none and you save your valuable mag picks. And because the passive of lockpicking actually reduces the amount of mag picks needed to open things, it becomes zero more and more often and you don't need to spend your mag picks. And also, uh, once you get it high enough, then you can see what's inside containers uh, before you pick them so you know whether or not to waste your mag picks, which is great. Uh, and finding pristine items is going to be helpful later on in the game. And there's just a lot of loot you can get from lockpicking, so it's a very, very valuable skill. Medical isn't that great in my opinion. I don't spend a lot of time healing. It's not generally necessary on normal. Maybe if you're playing on harder difficulties, it might come in handy. But the best passive is all the way at the bottom, which is damage bonus versus humans. And you don't really want to drop 100 points in this just to get that because there are better ways to get damage. So I wouldn't recommend getting medical. It's just generally not that great. Science is an all-around very, very good skill in the game. First, you need it at 20 in order to be able to increase the uh, usefulness of your weapons and armor. You can increase their damage or their armor rating very mildly for some bits. So you're going to want to be able to do that. So you should at least have 20. You can reduce the cost of it. Uh, at 40, and you can increase your corrosive damage by 25% and end rate dam damage at 25% at level 60 of this, which is phenomenal because this is one of the few passives in the game that increase damage. So it's worth considering if you want to, you know, if you're already kind of going the science route, you want to make sure you get to 60. Additionally, you increase your plasma damage, shock damage, and science weapon effects for every point you put into science. So if you're using a weapon that's plasma damage or shock damage, you're passively increasing your damage every time you put a point here. That's huge. It's probably one of the only passives besides increasing critical chance that's going to straight up increase your damage every time you put a point in. So if you're playing with a plasma rifle, long guns and science, baby, you're going to increase your damage by putting points into both. So this is a very, very good skill for combat as well as outside of combat. Engineering is another one I like to have at 20 because uh, I like to be able to repair in the field. Sometimes you fight a big mob of enemies and you're pretty battered up by the time you're done. Being able to repair right there instead of have to fast travel back to your ship and then run back. Very, very convenient. Past that, there aren't too many great benefits uh, from this skill line. Um, the fact that you can get extra mods from breaking things down. You have tons of mods. Mods are not hard to get. Um, the same with, you know, later on to getting rare mods. You have tons of mods. They're not hard to get. Money is not uh, a rarity. You can buy mods. Um, the pristine thing is nice, and damage versus auto mechanicals is nice, but these are not mandatory and are by no means deserve investing that deep just for those things. Moving along to the leadership skills, inspiration and determination are very much used for your companions. If you're going to be playing very or relying very heavily on your companions in the game, you might consider spending some points here. Now, it's it's not totally advised because, frankly, the companions are not uh, that amazing in combat. Uh, they die quite frequently. They'll probably die less if you invest points here, but they might die less if you just kill things faster too. So it's kind of a trade-off. How much do you want your companions helping versus how much do you want your own personal damage? And you're going to have to make that decision for yourself. Since I have not played the game on the Supernova difficulty, Determination and Inspiration, I'd imagine, become much, much more valuable on the hardest difficulty because keeping these people alive, increasing the damage that they do, is probably going to be the difference between winning or losing, unless you have like a lone wolf sniper where you're just pegging things in one hit. It's probably going to go one of those two ways. I don't think you're going to be able to go in with the same builds you would in normal mode and be successful, just run in with your mace and start whacking things in the face and your companions go down and everything's focusing on you, you're probably going to die. So I think the value of these goes up drastically the harder the game is, but if you're playing on normal or lower, probably don't need these skills. Before moving on to perks, one thing I really want to mention about skills that you may not know, it is explained but some people may not see it, is that when you put points into stealth, uh, you gain a skill point in sneak, hack, and lockpick, for example, until they hit 50. And then from that point onward, once they hit 50, you can only put points into sneak, hack, or lockpick individually. So once each area is up to 50, then you're going to have to take things up individually. So it's a really good idea to 
you know, take a lot of the skills uh, in this game up to 50 because you're getting your best bang for your buck and it kind of makes you really well-rounded. So, you know, maybe tech isn't something you drastically need for the build you're doing, but because you can only get single skills on maybe dialogue and weapons or whatever you're using and stealth's already maxed to 50 and it's individual, maybe it's not a bad idea to keep putting points into tech because you're getting three skill points for the price of one instead of one. So if you want to make a more balanced character, I definitely recommend spreading your skill points out a little more thinly than you would normally because they go a lot further. We really don't need to spend very much time on aptitude. It's simply going to give you a passive bonus to one of your skills or a reduction in damage. Pick whichever one best fits your playstyle. Moving along to perks, uh, the way perks work in the game is that you have to invest five perk points in tier one before you can unlock tier two, and you have to invest five more perk points however you want before you can unlock tier three, and then you have all the perks unlocked to pick from. The perks in the Outer Worlds are very, very underwhelming. Attributes are far more important in my opinion, so when you are deciding whether to take a flaw to get a perk point, I urge you to, to very much look at what you're going to lose attribute-wise to gain what you're going to gain from your perk. Sometimes it's not worth the trade-off. Not all flaws are the same. So when deciding to take a flaw, you know, evaluate that what you're going to lose versus the perk. Okay, let's run through these perks real quick. Toughness is very, very good if you're playing a melee build. You're going to get hit more. You need more health to stay alive. Take toughness if you're playing a melee build. Lone Wolf is an exceptional perk. It's probably the best perk in the game, but you have to play alone and you can't play in a group. A lot of people love to have their companions for their story and their dialogue and their interactions. You're going to be missing out on that if you take this perk, but it's the single best perk for increasing your damage. If you want to play a stealthy assassin or a lone sniper or whatever, you're going to want to take this perk. It will maximize your own personal damage. Cheetah is a really good perk, again, if you're playing a melee character because you need to close the distance between you and the target sometimes very, very rapidly so you get shot less, and this is going to help you with that. There's no stamina in this game, so you don't run out of stamina sprinting. You can just keep sprinting. So it's a very good one if you are playing a melee build. Precision is a good choice if you're playing a very companion-based build. Giving them 15% crit chance is nothing to sneeze at, so consider doing that if you plan on making your companions more effective. Resilient is another good choice if you plan to play melee. It's even good if you're ranged, particularly if you're taking armor that has, you know, skills on it, so it's it's not heavy armor and you need a little extra armor rating. But definitely if you're playing a melee character, you want to increase your armor rating as high as you can. So this is a good choice for a melee character. Pack Mule is just an all-around great perk if you're planning on playing a character that doesn't invest any points in strength. Just can make your life easier and more fun while playing the game. It's probably something a min-maxer wouldn't pick because it's not going to increase your damage or your survivability in any way. But it's phenomenal if you just want to have more fun playing the game and worry about your inventory less. Quicken the Dead is an excellent skill if you use tactical time dilation, which is something you should do if you're playing any sort of ranged character, particularly one that's focused on headshots or weak spot damage. It's not as useful if you're playing a, an assault rifle or a machine gun because you're just spraying and praying. But if you're trying to get, you know, those headshots, those weak spot damage, and maximize per bullet damage, it's a very, very good one. You want to have as much tactical time dilation, and so you need it to recharge faster in order to get those things. The Reaper is another excellent choice if you're trying to play a sniper-type character, because theoretically, if you go into tactical time dilation, you fire one bullet and kill something in one hit, then you're going to get 25% of your tactical time dilation just restored for that one shot, which may take you all the way back up. So theoretically, if you play it right, you can use tactical time dilation over and over in a loop by doing that. Weird Science is a strange one because it increases science weapon damage, which sounds great, like 50% damage is huge, but there are very, very few science weapons in the game. Very, very few. So you're going to be really restricting the weapons you can use, and you may not like those weapons, and it may take you a while to get them if you take this perk. So consider playing the game a ways. If you find a science weapon you like, go back and respec, take this perk. If not, don't worry about it. Scanner is another really, really good perk if you're playing a sniper type build. It's going to increase your headshot weak spot damage while in tactical time dilation. So if you're trying to get that sniper tactical time dilation loop going on, this is going to help you ensure you get that one shot, one kill. This is important because if I haven't mentioned it earlier, every shot you fire in tactical time dilation reduces the amount you have left remaining in it. So you don't want to just take eight shots in tactical time dilation, you probably wouldn't be able to take that many, but the more shots you fire in tactical time dilation, the faster your bar, you know, the bar of it shrinks and you come out of tactical time dilation. So if you can kill things in one hit, you might be able to stay there permanently or, you know, pretty close to permanently. Harvester is not a bad perk if you're playing a melee character because 
one thing you always have to keep your eye on when you're playing melee is your health way more so than when you're playing ranged because you're always going to be in more danger you're, you're putting yourself right in the middle of enemies there's nothing to really hide behind like you would if you're playing range you duck behind a rock and heal or whatever that you're not really going to have that option so being able to replenish health without having to stop and just keep swinging is not a bad passive to have steady hand sounds nice but honestly i didn't have that much problem with accuracy while i was just running around with an assault rifle shooting things from point blank so this might be a good one to have simply because there's a lack of good perks but it's not one that's going to like make or break your build Confidence, again, is another very good perk for that sniper type of build or even a stealth assassin melee type build because it's going to make your next shot crit, so you're almost guaranteed to kill the next target after you kill a target, which means you're guaranteed to kill the next target, and you can start that loop of tactical time dilation sniper headshots. I really, really like the Armor Master uh, perk, because not, not because of the armor rating bonus it gives, but because of the skill bonus. A lot of armors give you somewhere between 3 to 7 uh, skill points in a skill while you have it equipped and sometimes a group of skills like tech uh, and you can double that with this and that you essentially getting like if you had plus 10 tech with this that's 30 skill points for wearing that piece of armor and that's that's nothing to sneeze at at all and it's good for a very well-rounded character revenge is a decent perk since there are not too many perks that increase your damage flatly um, this one depends on you having a harmful condition like being on fire which can happen particularly if you're playing melee so this is probably a better perk for a melee type character, but it can come in handy if you're ranged. There are certain areas of the game where you're just constantly on fire, um, but it's definitely not one of the worst perks you can pick, um, and there are very few that affect damage, so definitely consider taking this if you're working on pure damage. Tit for Tat is excellent for melee builds. Again, health is a major concern being a melee character, and this is going to return 15% of your damage as health. So the harder you hit, the more you heal yourself, which should allow you to keep swinging. So if you're playing a melee build, you definitely want this perk. Penetrating shots is a great uh, perk if you're playing with a weapon that fires repeated shots, like a heavy machine gun or assault rifle, something that fires quickly. If you're trying for a one-shot, one-kill, this is useless. But if you're using something that fires repeatedly, maybe even a pistol, definitely want to look into this perk. Boom Headshot is an interesting perk because it's splash damage when you get a headshot kill, which is something you shouldn't really need if you're making a sniper build or a build that focuses on headshots. But it's still nice to have um, in some situations. Clearly, there are better perks that we've mentioned already. But if you find yourself making a sniper-type build or whatever, and you really can't find any other perks, it's probably going to be one of those like, well, I don't have anything better. This is a good perk for that. Last stand is just generally a, a damage-increasing perk, but you don't want your health to be under 25% regularly. So if you're planning on being low on health, this is not the greatest idea. However, if you make a build where you have no health regeneration and you keep your health very low intentionally and don't heal outside of combat, you could increase the damage you deal with one shot for a sniper build or a melee build. So if you want to play a little bit, live a little bit more dangerously, uh, this could go a long way in one of those sorts of builds. Well, I hope that my experience with the game has helped you guys sort of get a general concept of the character that you want to make and how to make an effective one. One of the challenges with these sort of games is that you don't often realize the mistakes you've made in your character creation until you're a little ways into the game and then you're like, well, I really want to be able to do more damage, uh, but I'm not optimized for it. And because I can't respect my attributes, I'm kind of screwed. So now I got to restart. That happens to me in just about every RPG I play. So I'm hoping this video prevents that from happening to you guys and you can make a very good character right out the gate.